The story goes that a man sows good seed in his field. And as he was sleeping, uh, the, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. After some time, after the, the, the wheat had sprouted and it began to grow, the workers also realized that there were weeds growing among the wheat. And so they asked the master, hey, what, what, what's going on? Didn't you sow good seed? And the master's like, yeah, of course. So, so then why are there weeds here? And the master answers, well, the only natural conclusion is that an enemy has done this. So then they're like, all right, so what do we do? Do you want us to pull it out? Let's pull out all the weeds. And the master says, hold on, hold your horses, wait. Uh, don't do that, because if you do that, if you pull up the weeds, perhaps the wheat might go along with it. So let's wait. We'll let both of these things grow. And at harvest time, then we will separate. I'll ask the workers to separate the weeds from the wheat. And the weeds will be bundled up and thrown in the fire, and the wheat will be gathered and poured in the storehouse. And so uh, I'm, I'm looking at this parable and I'm thinking about the harvest. And uh, obviously, you know, the harvest is guaranteed. But within that harvest, that, 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 that guarantee comes when you sow something. In fact, in, in many uh, verses uh, throughout the scriptures, you find moments where um, uh, God essentially is telling his people, you know, you, you get what you put in. You know, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Paul is talking to the church of Galatia and he says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Right? So, so we, we have to plant something in order to harvest something. The harvest is guaranteed, but you have to put a little work into it. And I think that during this harvest season, something that we can take from this parable is the fact that um, we often focus on the wrong thing when it comes to harvest. When it comes to harvest, at least in this parable, uh, most people will focus on the fact that, oh, it's a time of judgment. Oh, it's a, it's a time of, of separation. It's, it's a time of judgment where the good will be separated from the bad, where um, you'll have a, you know, people next to you who ended up being weeds and you were the, the sole good wheat. And that's not what this parable is about. It's not about you looking around to see what everybody else is or, or, or be confused about whether you're a wheat or a weed. In fact, the harvest, this harvest parable is really focusing on the method that the master decides to practice. And the method that he decides to practice goes against what everybody thought should be done. No, 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 you're, we're not pulling out the weeds. And his method can be narrowed down to this. Acceptance over separation. Inclusion over isolation. And it is an invitation to the church to do likewise. So during a moment of harvest, while we're thinking about Oh, let's cut all this stuff down. Let's, you know, take it for ourselves. What, what God, what the master wants his workers to understand, what the master wants his church to understand in this instance, is that the harvest is a time for us to accept and include everyone. And that, that method requires the most work, requires the most time, requires the most dedication. And what we see is that if we were to translate that to what the church does, to get to know people, to get to accept them, to get to understand them, it requires a lot more time than simply picking something up and eating it. The harvest time it was a time for people to remember to accept and to include. I love this because even if we're not talking about a community of people, if we're, if we're talking more about like a personal, uh, something personal or like towards an individual, then perhaps to you, I hope that this parable serves to, to invite you into acknowledging the fact that 
man, it's not, the, the parable is not specific about how many weeds were around each wheat. You may look around you, and as a child of God, you may say, I'm a wheat, and you look around you and say, well, well, how come I have like eight or nine weeds choking the life out of me, while the wheat next to me only has one weed or has no weeds? And to you, all I can tell you is that the parable does promise a time of harvest. The parable does promise that the master will instruct for all the things that have been taking and sucking the life out of you, that have been taking this a sense of purpose from your life, that have been eating away at you, that have caused you to struggle, to stagnate, stagnate, perhaps to not grow to your full potential. The very things that have taken the shine from that golden color that you're supposed to have will be stripped away and it will exist no longer. That is the promise that the harvest has for those who take a time to see the harvest that God provides. I leave you with this little pep talk this little pep talk verse that, uh, that Paul gives uh, the people in Galatia. And it says the following, it says, uh, Let us not become weary of doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Church, I hope that you're able to accept and include without giving up.